Hello students, today I am taking up system approach. It is the last administrative theory of section 1. You know this topic has not been asked in BPSC frequently. Once it was asked in notes. But you know presently there is trend of asking question on conceptual basis. Let's say last year there was question to discuss the all administrative theory concerned with efficiency and economy. So whether you do system approach or not, but you require to mention there, because in a sense of system approach, if you write all administrative theory, means you are not writing in complete way. So this thing you require to do, and one thing more, presently BPSC is taking up some unusual aspect also, which we have not asked earlier. So it may be possible that this year there may be question on system approach. And one thing also I would like to say, since we are doing administrative th uh, theory portion, that is section one, here first five, which you, you can say introduction plus organization are very important. And you, you cannot take any try here. You cannot do any guesswork. You do all the things completely. Because if you go through all the things, then there is no difficulty when you take up the later portion or not, you may have three questions to write answer. So this is thing you require to keep in mind. So now today I am discussing system approach. You know, system approach is not new to public administration, is not unique in public administration. It has been very much family, it is familiar in almost all social behavioral science. You know, this is developed in you know, not in social behavioral science, it was developed in biology. And I have pointed out, it was a famous biologist called Ludwig von Wattelanffy. He first coined the term system for explaining interaction between living being and its environment. Get it point? In Mary Parker Follett, uh, her, in her writings in 1920 and 30s, explained organization as a social system. Chester, Bernard, you know, can be termed as full-blown system approach thinker. He defined organization as a social cooperative system. Here it is Norbert Wiener who explained organization in cybernetic concept. Cybernetic term is basically derived from the Greek word kybernetes. Kybernetes means self-steering, which continues work that is system with cybernetics. He explained organization in terms of input-output process mechanism. But you know, Herbert Simon and Marx is the man who contributed to system approach. They can be termed as father of behavior system approach to certain extent. Get your point? And here, Seat, Philip Selznick, you can say, Amitai Joani, etc. are other who contributed to system approach. But the most important personality are Herbert Simon and Marx. Here, some books written on system approach that is organization by Simon and Marx. Then you can say here, Modern Organization Theory, then Handbook of Organization Theory. These are some books written by, written on behavior system approach. Get a point? So what, what do you mean a system approach? Before going into detail, let me tell you, we have discussed several theory. We completed scientific management theory. We completed administrative theory. We completed bureaucratic theory, human relation theory, behavioral approach. And you know, all theories are complete. Uh, all theories are correct and appropriate in their framework. But it, no theory can be termed as complete one because no theory worked on environment, number one, and no theory worked on entire aspect of organization. This th the scientific management theory deals with worker at the soft law level. On the other hand, administrative management theory worked on management, manage, manager at apex level. Behavioral theory did as aspect on behavioral aspect, then classical theory on normative and pre theoretical aspect. But you know, the, no, theory, ideal theoretical aspect, practical aspect, structural aspect, functional aspect, human aspect, behavioral aspects, all are interrelated. And they are very much related to environment also. 
but no theory in the in the beginning had addressed this thing in totality it is a system theory you can say this is a first theory in organization which discussed organization in totality it took new classical approach new classical approach modern approach plus it also in, in uh, integrated environmental aspect of organization that's why system approach can be termed as first theory that is macro theory in the real sense getting point and you know this theory discuss organization in dynamic way organic way and in, to in totality prior to that this theory no theory was in position to address organization in totality getting point so it is the first theory which discuss organization in totality because all aspects are interrelated and having influence over each other you cannot study structural part and you think that it has no any bearing on functional aspect it has definitely strong influence on functioning functioning has important bearing on behavioral aspect behavioral has implication with environmental aspect so all these aspects are interrelated related so until unless you address all in totality you are not going to get a broad vision of the thing it is a system approach which gives organization in totality which discuss organization in dynamic form which discuss organization in you can say in complete uh, phenomena so this is basic important thing get a point then the question arises what is system if someone you ask what is system and what do you say they say system is basically component of you can say complex of interrelated several interrelated components which combine to form a totality getting point when you talk on what what is meant by system system is complex or set of interrelated components which combine to form a totality suppose there can be several organ of body getting point which they all combine and give a physiology physiology of human being independently they may have a status or they, they don't have any status but when they combine with human body they have their functioning and they, they have significance and a very important role to play getting point so have society administration then government then human system all can be natural system all can be discussed as a system getting point the system is basically when you talk of system getting point it implies two things that system may have several component their component may have their own functioning very much system may be some boundary and through boundary and outside boundary there is environment through boundary system interacts with environment very much and if you talk of system you talk of two things first we decide the thing within system and the thing outside system within system there are several component which work their own and combine to fun, uh, combine to function so that organization in totality function and in war outside means there is boundary which outside boundary there is environment and through environment boundary or system interacts with the environment get your point system i will tell you when you talk of system we talk of three things first the component part of system then interaction of the systems and last interaction of system with environment first what i told part of system number 2 system functioning or interaction of sub system with you can say system and third systems interaction with environment get a point so a, all system can be explained in terms of input or process output feedback mechanism what is input input is something like raw material which society or in, in a system draws from environment it can be in the form of information it can be in the form of resources which it put a, puts it at disposal and transforms through internal process technical process or social process and converts into output output can be in the forms of goods it can be in the forms of services and transmits to the society society 
responded positively and negatively environment responded positively or negatively which are collected at feedback level which are which is again used at input next input level so this way the phenomena continues this is system in a point the system input process output feedback input process output feedback and there is environment which is also called supra system so these are called sub system this is called system and this is called supra system then you find so i told each society each system has its own boundary this boundary can be of two types closed boundary and open boundary if this boundary is closed then system will be closed system and when boundary is open then system will be open system so physical system you can say mechanical system are example of closed system while social system biological system are example of open system get a point closed systems are those system which have very limited or negligible interaction with environment and closed systems are those who have continuous interaction with environment regular interaction with environment closed system has tendency to move towards entropy disorder disintegration etc and open system have tendency to move towards celebration diversification differentiation etc then you find so you can say caste as a closed system then you can say religion as a closed system class as a open system north korea as closed system america as open system tribal society as closed system you can say religion society or you can say metropolitan society is open system why you know in tribal in andaman nicobar are in the depopulation stage because they are closed system and closed system has to move towards entropy tendency means going towards self destruction that's why there is you can say growing depopulation stage there get in point you you can find earlier than afghanistan when it became closed then iraq when it became closed what happened they moved towards this order and this integration so this is very important thing get in point system has several features i have tried to find out certain features like synergism holism when you talk of system you talk of holism you don't talk of in parts you have to talk, discuss in totality when you talk of system you talk of homeostasis means that is dynamic equilibrium means equilibrium is not static or fixed rather it changes as per situation then when you talk of system you talk of cybernetics cybernetics means there is some sort of Uh, self steering system input output mechanism then that is organism organism means a feature of both living and non living features getting points so organism when you talk of uh, system you talk of isomorphism means similar property getting point when you talk of system you talk of equifinality means same result everywhere and last but not the least when you talk of system you talk of entropy means tendency towards self destruction get in point in our human body also we have tendency towards self destruction when a boy a child gets birth then he become you know adult then he become o a mature then old then ultimately it goes to death so this way the process continues so whosoever came here will have to go so no one is here in permanent to permanent live here no one here to live permanently you know why because everyone has tendency of you can entropy tendency or moving towards self destruction when you find so this is the thing you require to keep in mind you know we here in system approach we define organization as a system you know and in a system has several component but the number of components vary as per organization for example in police organization number of sub system will be quite different from the annual has been the department or organization their number of department or sub system will be less as compared to home department but in general there can be a common sub system which can be found in every sub system and uh, every system like first technical sub system this is main which converts input into output 
लैक थाना लैक ब्लॉक थाना पुलिस स्टेशन इज यू कैन से कंसर्न विद टेक्निकल फंक्शन टेक्निकल सर सिस्टम इट यूजेज सेवरल रिसोर्सेज एंड मेंटेन्स लॉन ऑर्डर मेनिंग पॉइंट स्कूल इज बेसिकली कंसर्न विद टेक्निकल फंक्शन इट यूजेज सेवरल एजुकेशन रिसोर्सेज टू इन प्रोड्यूस एजुकेटेड चिल्ड्रेन मेनिंग पॉइंट देन सेकेंड इज सपोर्ट इज सब सिस्टम विच प्रोवाइड सपोर्ट टू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन like procurement raw material then you can say advertisement etc what is function third maintenance function to maintain a workable work atmosphere that is maintenance of system then you can say adaptive sub system it facilitates organization to accommodate changes in environment to adjust with environment that is adaptive sub system then social psychological sub system which maintains social cohesiveness among workers that is social psychological sub system then a structural sub system it defines formal relation of authority from top to bottom from dgp to constable that is a structural sub system and last but not the least managerial sub system managerial sub system is what managerial sub system means the system which is concerned with you can say uh, integrating all other sub system which is performing posco function which utilizes other system to work for organizational objective so this is the basic thing so first technical second supportive third maintenance mm-hmm. adaptive fifth social psychological sixth structural and seventh managerial i just pointed theek okay? in the same way three ways church men is also science system thinker and he has written one book called system approach in which he try to draw attention of five basic components of system when you talk of system you talk of total objective of system that is one when you talk of system you talk of systems environment which is work which works as a constant number 3 when you talk of system you talk of system resources which are used at disposal <laughs> when you talk of system you talk of components means sub system they have their own role and functions and last when you talk of system they have and management of the system which is something like you can say cpu core processing unit that which play very significant role did you find which takes decision bit provides leadership etc so according to c wets west churchman five basic consideration of system first objective second environment third resources fourth components and fifth management did you find so these are important so what if you go through system approach what you are going to get yeah definitely we discuss organization in totality we get complete and overall view of organization we can easily locate what are functional dimension and what are dysfunctional dimension and can take corrective measure also getting one this system approach is basically integrating all aspect in dynamic and total form that's why it gives a you can say complete view of organization functioning getting one this approach has been very you can say popular not only in public administration but in all social behavioral sciences in public administration also we apply this concept in explaining leadership decision making communication administrative reform you know anywhere you can development administration anywhere you can apply system approach to explain anyway it has you can say wider applicability getting point but you know it has limitation also like other theory so what limitation it has definitely first thing that it is very vague and over simplified it is very very difficult to understand the whole topic is complete with nothing in hand so this is the over simplified and vague number 2 it it has it lacks a property of direct application how we is use it in practice it it has strong limitation third it does not give any conceptual framework to analyze organization and fourth it does not differentiate between system 
or interaction of system with environment because you know interaction of environment interaction with environment in police organization may be different from interaction of education department with environment so here it does not it takes in in general so this is also one of the limitation first too simple and vague number 2 no direct application number 3 no conceptual contribution number 4 no this very general type explanation no specification no clear cut you can say demarcating difference between in a system the uh, sphere city etc getting why but even then this system approach is important because it uh, synthesizes classical new classical and modern approach in totality it provides it provides system in organization environment interaction that leads to emergence of ecological approach it further leads uh, cause emergence of contingency approach that is very importantly uh, uh, used presently so this these are achievement of system approach getting point where so have bpsc is concerned there has i told in the beginning there has not been question as topic but in the Within framework, there is chances of asking question from new con- comparative perspective. Like there can be classical comparison between classical theory and system theory. Let me find. Suppose question came: What is what are similarity between classical theory of organization and system theory of organization? Then what you will say? This question can be asked. Let me find. So as you know, there has been popular dissimilarity like. Henry Fayol and Taylor. Then you can say, say scientific management theory and Mayo, Elton Mayo human relation theory. These are some uh, diagonist. Uh, you can say uh, there are opposite concepts to certain extent. That's why there has been question also. But this time in UPSC there was one question. Compare and contrast between classical theory and uh, system theory. Then what you are going to write? you know there i told system approach does not uh, you can say reject classical theory system approach supplements other aspect also to classical theory like new classical up, uh, concepts and modern concepts also so whatsoever opinion ideology principles are being shared by classical theory and system theory also share these things like it also believes in formal organization it also believes in hierarchy it also believes in economic man it also concerned with economy and efficiency it also you can say uh, discuss with formal structure of organization it everything whatever it added further to system approach are difference between classical theory and system approach so you have to point out what are similarity what are common and what are uncommon so if you see the similarity then classical theory or classical approach is closed theory this is open one then classical theory basically emphasizes on static structure of organization while system theory emphasizes on dynamic process of interaction then this classical theory explains human being negative sense theory x while system theory defines human being in positive sense that is theory y this classical theory mainly concerned with formal dimension of organization while classical the administrative system theory deals with all dimension of organization then classical theory favors rigid hierarchical structure then system theory favors a flexible participative structure then you can say classical theory explain human motivation in economic terms only while system theory explain human motivation in multi dimensional perspective system the- classical theory consider organizational order imposed from above then a system theory consider organizational order is product of organization environment interaction then classical theory does not a classical theory suppose provide measures to improve organizational functioning 
<coughs> system theory does not suggest any measures it just explain it then classical theory is basically deterministic while administrative system theory is probabilistic then one thing classical theory is one single causation single factor causation and it is it assumes multi factor causation so you know system theory is complete theory it adds several new dimension to formal organization so in this way classical theory is getting supplemented in several and significant way by system approach so you can say uh, uh, system theory is far far western well advanced step towards classical approach and it be, it is basically main theory which can be termed as complete theory of organization a macro theory of organization which further led to emergence of ecological approach contingency approach etc which is at present in practice so today i have completed this theory and i must tell you all administrative theory scientific management theory administrative theory human relation theory all are different definitely in their approach but they have common objective that is economy and efficiency and if you include system approach so since system approach works on environment aspect then effectiveness may also come so you can say almost all administrative theory does not work only on efficiency in economy rather they work on three is that is economy efficiency and effectiveness particularly system approach is very appropriate here to that and no contingency approach and ecological approach this all emphasize on environmental aspect so three is is no hallmark of administrative theory and all administrative theory presently concentrating on three is that is economy efficiency and effectiveness so you have to write one question which was which was asked in upsc compare and contrast classical theory of administration and and system theory of administration organization i do hope you have finished both the theory and you may have certain information also you go through books you listen my lecture and try to write your own if you have any difficulty you can contact me okay all the best enjoy